Okay, so I got, my video was too long, so it got cut off at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and circle back. <clears throat> we were finishing up this integral. So natural log of n from 1 to b, substitute in b in 1. The natural log of 1 goes to 0. Now if I take the limit as b goes to infinity of the natural log of b, that goes to infinity, which means we diverge. So if I use improper integral and calculate the integral from 1 to b of 1 over n squared, where b goes to infinity, this time I can rewrite as a negative exponent, raise the power by 1, and divide by it. And I get minus 1 over n. Now substitute b, substitute 1. I pull the 1 out in front, so 1 over b minus 1 over 1. As b goes to infinity, this term goes to 0, so we have minus a negative 1. So this time we get a number. We get 1, so therefore we converge. So although the ratio test was inconclusive for both 1 over n and 1 over n squared, remember I said you have to run another test? Well, we ran the integral test. And what we found is 1 over n diverges, 1 over n squared converges. And this jives with what we know about our p-series test, where we can just look at the exponent. Okay, so we're going to move on to the last page of notes. This video will be relatively short. There's just one long problem that we have to do, so I'm just double-checking. Everything looks fine. Okay, so our, again, a reminder, our process to determine the interval of convergence, including testing the endpoint, as we move on to section 9.5 is going to involve us using the ratio test to find the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence. And now we'll substitute the left-hand endpoint of the interval into the series and decide whether the resulting series converges. We'll substitute the right-hand endpoint of the interval into the power series and then we'll see if it converges or diverges. And then we'll start asking the question, do we converge absolutely or converge conditionally? And that'll make more sense in 9.5. Now, the very last thing we need to do in section 9.4 is called the telescoping series. So let's talk about what that is and review. If a series is geometric with the first term equal to A and having the common ratio R, then we know the series converges by this sum. As long as R, the absolute value of R is less than 1, and it'll diverge otherwise. There's another type of series whose sums are easily found, and that's called the telescoping series, which is a series in which, upon investigation of the partial sums, we find that all the terms between the first and the last cancel, resulting in a series given by the sum of the limit of S of n. And remember, S of n is the partial sum. If I take the limit of the partial sum, the sum of the series is revealed that's the limit. So first I think we need to take a look at what we've got uh, going on here. First thing I notice is if I look at this and I think about all of our techniques of integration, one, two, three, four, this looks very much like partial fractions. So we're going to do that. We're going to use partial fractions to rewrite our nth term. So we're going to follow that process and come up with an a and a b. So we get a over 4n minus 3 plus b over 4n plus 1. And then continuing on with our process, get a common denominator. So we get a times 4n plus 1 plus b times 4n minus 3 all over the common denominator. 4n minus 3, 4n plus 1. So I'm going to go downhill a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, now we're going to rewrite the numerator. So we're going to group like terms. So what's multiplying n? Well, 4a. What else is multiplying n? 4b. And everything else that's left over is just a constant. So we have a minus 3b is my constant. 
And again, that's all over my common denominator, which at this point, we don't even need to worry about anymore. Okay, so if you recall from our process for partial fractions, we're going to equate the left side to the right side numerator. So I know I have n terms and constant terms. Here's my constant, so that means I have 0n plus 4 equals. And I'm going to equate this term, n times 4a plus 4b, plus my constant term, a minus 3b. So I have two equations and two unknowns. So I can set 0 equal to 4a plus 4b, and from that we can conclude, without having to do the math, that a is equal to negative b. Now I'm going to use this term, set it equal to 4, so I have 4 equals a minus 3b, and now I'm going to substitute negative b in for a, 4 equals negative b minus 3b, so 4 is equal to negative 4b, and b equals negative 1. If b equals negative 1, then a is going to equal 1. So, the whole task here was to rewrite our original series in the partial fraction format. So this can now be written as the sum from n equals 1 to infinity 1 over 4n minus 3 minus 1 over 4n plus 1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start writing out write partial sums to get a general formula so then we can take the limit. We want a general formula for s of n. So s1 is going to be, just plug a 1 in for n, so we get 4 minus 3 is 1, so that becomes 1 minus, plug a 1 in here, this becomes 5, 1 fifth. s2 is going to be s1 plus whatever we get when we plug a 2 in. So when I plug a 2 in, 4 times 2 is 8 minus 3 is 5, so we get 1 fifth minus, plug a 2 in, that's 9. And if I go and plug back substitute in for S1, I see that this is 1 minus a fifth, and then I have plus a fifth minus a ninth. So these terms are going to drop out. S3 then would be S2 plus whatever I get when I plug a 3 in. So that's 12 minus 3 is 9. 1 ninth minus uh, 13. And if I back substitute in for S2, I get 1 minus a fifth plus a fifth minus a ninth plus a ninth minus a thirteenth. So just like we were told above, we find that all the terms between the first and the last cancel, resulting in a series given by the sum. So we see here clearly that all the terms drop out except for the last one. So this would be equal, just like above, this would be 1 minus a 9th, this would be 1 minus a 13th. So if I kept going, I would get a general term, 1 minus 1 over 4n plus 1. And now to get the sum of the series, I would take the limit. So s is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of s of n, just like it says above. So that's the limit of 1 minus 1 over 4n plus 1. When n goes to infinity, this goes to 0, so my limit is 1. This ends section 9-4.